Hello and welcome to the VBA Jetpack course by Trump Excel. I am Sumit Bansal and in this video we will learn how to create custom functions using VBA in Excel. So let's get started. Here I have a workbook with the name customfunctions.xlsm and we would create a couple of custom functions and see how it works in the worksheet. So let me press Alt F11 to go to the VBA editor and here I've already inserted a module which is module 1. Now the first difference that you would notice between a sub and a function is that a sub begins with the keyword sub and then you type the name of the sub. A function would always begin with the keyword function. So that now VBA would know that this whatever goes after this would be a function. And then you would have to give a name to the function. Let's say I'm trying to get current date. So I would create a function called current date and then I would give empty parentheses. Now uh, a function can take arguments. In this case I'm creating a function that would not take any arguments so I'm leaving these empty. But in case you create a function that takes argument then you would have to put those arguments here and we will see how that works. But here what we are trying to do is we are trying to create a function that would not take any arguments. We can simply type this in the worksheet and it would return today's date and we need to specify what kind of return or what kind of result does it return. In this case I would say as date which means that this function would return a date and now as soon as I go click somewhere else or press enter it automatically inserts end function and now here in between these two lines we would write the code and the code would be a simple single line current date is equal to date date in VBA would give you current date and what we have done is we have assigned current date to this function which is current date. Now let's go back to worksheet and let's type the function name and you can see while I'm doing it it shows me the name which means that this has now been included as one of the functions in this workbook. It will not work in any other workbook because the code is in this workbook but it does function in this workbook. So now let's select this. We would not give any arguments in this. It would be empty parenthesis and now when I hit enter it gives me current date. Today is 17th September here when I'm recording this video and this returns current date. Now let's see what happens when you can give an argument. So let me delete this. Let me press Alt F11 and let's delete this. Now let's or let me keep this as it is. Let's create a new function. So I would say function and this time I would want to return current month. So I would say current month and here I would need to input the date and let's say uh, let's not call this current month. Let's call this input month and here what I would do is I would take a date as input and then I would return the month value for that date which means that if I enter say 1st January 2015 then this would return 1 if I enter 1st February then this would return 2 and so on so I would have to mention what argument it can take and let the argument name be input date and that argument would be of a data type which would be date and I, I need to mention this because if I don't mention this then it can take any uh, input here. I can type my name and it will take it as an input. So I need to type this so that it would identify that there is, is a problem in the kind, uh, there is a data mismatch and then it would take the right kind of data. And here I would simply say as integer because this function would return a value ranging between 1 to 12. So I've taken integer here. Now let me press enter. It inserts end function automatically. And now I would type the name input month is equal to month. And then we would say input date. Now let's go back and see how this works what first I need to do is I would need to enter a date somewhere let's say the date is 1-1-2015 and now I would use this function here so I would say input and as I'm typing you can see that it shows me this function and it will not show me any help otherwise there are tooltips that guide you uh, what to enter and, and what is the number of arguments that can be taken is it optional or not in this case it would not and now I need to enter the date here. So let's say I take this date as the input and now when I hit enter it returns 1. 
let's again check this I come here and I change this to 2 and this becomes 2 which means that this work function is working fine so this is how you can create a function which either takes no arguments or it can take a couple of arguments now you can also call functions from other subs or functions so let's say I am creating a subroutine to add a worksheet so I will call it add worksheet and here what I do is I simply add a worksheet here I would say worksheets dot add and now in that worksheet I want to enter current date which would be this function so what I would do is I would say active sheet dot range a1 dot value is equal to current date and what this would do is it would add a worksheet and then in that worksheet in cell a1 it would enter current date now if you notice I already have option explicit here if this variable has not been defined this would not run and I'm not declaring this variable here because it's not a variable it's a function but it would still work because now VBA would know that this is a function and this function is here so as soon as it comes here it will go back to this line uh, execute this function and then come back to this sub let's see how it works so I'm here in sheet 1 let me execute this one step at a time I would press F8 it comes here it enters a worksheet which is sheet 4 I press F8 it goes up to this function because now it is entering this value but it does not know what this value is it will fetch the value from here and it will come here it will say current date is equal to date which is today's date current date now has today's dates value and now it would come back so now you can see that here it has entered the date so this is how you can call one function from a sub or from another function now these are all simple examples and in uh, regular use you may not create some function that already exists in VBA so let's look at a practical example here here I have a worksheet with the name multiple lookup and what I'm trying to do here is I will create a formula that would give me all the lookup value for this country in the single cell so in this case what I'm trying to do here is I would use a function that would extract all these names Joe Sam Akash in a single line so it will give me Joe uh, Sam Jane and Akash because there are four names in front of the country which is India similarly for US it would give me Jack Jane Joe and Sam in a single line now this is something that you cannot do with existing functions in Excel there is VLOOKUP but VLOOKUP only gives you the first matching value there are index match and other functions but you cannot do this and even if you can do this it will be very very difficult a complex array formula so let's see how we can use VBA to create a custom function that can do this for us so I would press alt F11 to go into the VB editor mode and here we would write the function it would start with function and the name is single cell extract you can name it whatever you want and this function would take a couple of arguments let's first see what these arguments would be the first one would be the lookup value here which would be the country then the second one would be lookup range which would be this one and the third one would be the column number from which we want to extract the result I've taken these arguments which are exactly same as uh, the one in VLOOKUP except the last one where it is true or false uh, and these arguments would be the lookup value, the lookup range and the column number. So let's start writing the code. The first argument here would be lookup range, sorry lookup value value and this would be a string in this case I have mentioned this as string because all these are strings in case you think that this could be numbers or alphanumeric or something else then uh, you can either leave it out or you can mention the correct data type I'm taking string here then the second argument is lookup range and this would be a range type because I would be selecting this entire range of cells and provide this as lookup range so now since it's a range I would have to declare it as uh, a range object and the third one would be column number and this would be an integer 
in this case I know that column number would be 2 but again you can uh, have a bigger data set and you can specify the column number so in case you had say many other uh, columns here and then sales step was say the fifth column then you could use 5 as the column number and still get the right result so let me get, go to the full screen mode and now when I hit enter it enters end sub automatically and here I would have to declare a couple of variables the first one would be I as integer I would be using this variable i while I go through the loop and the second one would be result as string and result is where we would store the final result it would, which would be all the names uh, uh, together in a single cell now let's start the loop the loop would be for next loop and we discussed for next loop a couple of videos ago and here I would say if i is equal to 1 2 lookup range dot rows dot count now what this does is it would give me the count of rows here in this range there are 16 rows and this would give me the count of it so my loop would run from 1 to 16 so that it would go for each it would analyze each cell and go down one at a time and go through all the rows so here I would use lookup range dot rows dot count and then I would use the if condition and I would say if lookup range dot cells and here I would say I comma 1 is equal to lookup value then now let's go through this line first here what we are checking is if lookup range dot cells I comma 1 which means that when the loop runs it would analyze each cell one at a time in this case i is one so this would be cells one one which would be this cell and if this is look equal to the lookup value then extract this name else move on so here we would type the then condition which would be result is equal to result and lookup range dot cells i comma column number so this would be the result and what we are doing here is say we are using India as the lookup value it goes here it checks each cell it comes here and it knows that this is the right lookup value then it would pick up Joe why because we are saying result is equal to result and lookup range dot cells I comma column number and column number would be 2 so here it would be going through these and picking up these names now it would pick up this name then again when the loop runs it comes to US which is not the lookup value in this case it would leave it out come here and when it again comes to India and and checks here it would pick up Sam so it would pick up Joe and then it would pick up Sam and then it would pick up Jane and then Akash and then it would get out of the loop so this is how we are picking up these names for the right lookup value and now I would come here and I would say end if and then finally we would have next I so we have created the loop and within loop we have the condition that is picking up the, uh, the right stuff what we need to do is we need to assign the final result to this function because this is what it would return so I would here come and say single cell extract is equal to result and then we have end function so we have created our function now let's see how it performs there in the worksheet so I would come here and I would type single cell extract and in this case I don't have any help menu so I would have to know what arguments I need to put in the first one was the lookup value which is this India the second one was, was the lookup range so I would select this entire range I would press F4 to lock it and then third one was the column number because I want to extract the names from here and now when I hit enter it gives me Joe, Sam, Jane and Akash but the problem here is there is no separator there is no space nothing but all I know is that this, fa uh, this formula actually works so let me double click here and I know that this formula is working it's giving me the right result now it's just the cosmetic changes where I need to introduce spaces and that would happen in this line because here I am I'm extracting the result and then I'm joining all these values so here what I would do is I would say result and I would introduce a space here and and in the end I would add a comma here 
now let's see what happens I close this and now I hit F2 and it does this the right thing it is giving me comma and it, it is giving me a space as a separator now everything is fine except the fact that in this result I also have an additional comma in the end and I don't want this I have uh, these names but uh, it should end here after Akash or after Sam there shouldn't be this comma here so to tackle that what all we need to do is we need to come here and we know how many characters are there in this result we can find it out using the left function or the len function and then we would simply deduct one character from the right so to do that we would use the left formula and these are inbuilt VBA formula so these are also there in worksheet but these are also there in VBA so if, as soon as I type left you can see it says string and length now this is my string and the length here would be len result minus one which says that whatever is the result uh, subtract one character from it and give me the rest of it so it would give me all the characters from the left except the last character and now let's see if this works I come here I press F2 and I hit enter and surely it does work and now you have created a function that would take this lookup value and then return all these matching names in a single line separated by a comma and a space so congratulations you have created the first real world custom function in VBA now one more thing that I want to cover in this video is what if you want to have some arguments as optional so in this case let's say I want this column number to be optional which means that if I do not have a big range of cells if I only have these two columns I want this to automatically take two as the default value but if that is not the case then I can also specify the value so what I would do is I here simply type optional column number as integer is equal to 2 and that's it oops I need to type optional here so it would be optional column number as integer is equal to 2 what you have done is first of all you have told VBA that it, this is an optional argument and in case this is not entered then this should be the default value if you want if you're creating a formula where uh, there are optional arguments such as true or false then you can put true and false here whatever is the default value now let's see if it works well I would come here and I would delete the column number and I hit enter and it still works because it is taking the column number as the default value which is 2 here if I put some other default value then that would be taken so this is how you can create a custom function using VBA in Excel that's it in this video. I hope you found this useful. Thank you and have a nice day.